you become a better um, pass receiver over the years and, and also yards after the catch too? Derek, you think you do that better than maybe when? when yeah, you I think out? coming out here and just working on it. Uh, me and uh, Coach Tony, we work on it a lot um, throughout practice and just having heavy, heavy emphasis on it. Cause it's something I want to get better at, and you know, you just constantly work at it. Is, is yards after the catch in, in particular is that something that you feel that you do anything differently or, or better than maybe when you, you know your first couple of years? Um, well, I mean, I, I hope so. You know, just catching the ball and you know, just trying to get what I can out of the play. So you're the Damon uh, Rooney Sportsmanship Award winner. I mean, what's something like that mean to you? And where you, you do you consider yourself always been a good sport playing growing up? Yeah, I just try to be nice to those guys out there and you know pick them up, give them handshakes, and tell them nice tackle. So hopefully, I, I'll, I'll be able to you know take it home. But. You know, it was all about being a good sport, being a good competitor, and um, I'm honored to be up for it. There were some guys when you were growing up, whether it was probably maybe starting at Alabama to when you came in the league, who set a good example for you coming in? I think uh, LT, LaDainian Thompson, my favorite player, football player of all time. So I watched him a lot, and, um, you know, that's probably the one, I would say. When you think back to, to the Bengals' playoff game last year, it was your first game back in a long time. How do you compare, you know, going into this game versus that? You know, what was going on in your head coming back from the injury and so forth? I think the screw's been my my foot a little longer, <laughs> but yeah, I was just coming back from injury, and you know, I've been in the swing of things this season now. So, Derek, how beneficial was this mini bye week for you, and how much are your batteries recharged heading into this last or this part of the season? Yeah, I mean, rest is always important. Um, and we, you know, we appreciate Coach giving us time off to uh, get our body back under us, uh, get away from this from a little bit, and recharge and get back to work. How do they look now compared to the team you saw on defense back in uh, January? I think they look the same. I mean, I think they play how they play, and you know, and that's how you know, they they do they do things. I mean, the same guys over there, the same guys playing well together, making tackles, making plays, blitz packages, different fronts, different looks. So I think they look the same, playing well. Which when when the uh, team throws for 300 yards like they did last week, that in encouraging for you. That means maybe defenses start to open up just a little bit if there's more of a downfield threat in the in the passing game. I mean, I mean Ryan's been balling and um, Seaver's been doing a great job, making catches, uh, making plays. I'm just happy that everybody's out there be able to make plays and you know be able to string drives together and get points. How much is having Traylon back kind of helped with that? Just because he adds that element of speed on the outside. I'm um, just you know just, just happy to see him get in the zone, make plays, um, big plays, going down the field and you know catching passes. You know, I've seen that a lot in college and you know to see it now it's just it's good to see and um, you know he's gonna be a weapon for us. You had mentioned during the offseason, uh, Tannehill had contacted you. You guys talked about the loss and, and where he was at that point. Have you seen any diff anything different from him just as far as like his leadership or his, his urge to win or preparation or anything that, uh, in that goes, matter? These last two weeks, he's in the last two weeks. I mean, that speaks for itself. You're just balling, ready to get in there, ready to ball. He's the leader of this, um, this offense. He's a warrior. And I think he shows that week in and week out. You lobby for more uh, chances to throw the ball since uh, you've now got your total up to three touchdowns in your career. I mean, I'm young Peyton Manning, so I mean, I hope you know I get another opportunity. <laughs> why, why is the jump important on that pass? Like, why can't you just take a step or two and lob it over the line? Has it worked the times I've done it? That's why it's, I mean, it's important for that. So, did, did you like your? I mean, uh, on that play, did it play out kind of like you thought it would as far as your depth getting the line where you thought they may be? bit and what's the key maybe on that play? Yeah, I mean, at the time I thought it was good and I looked and I had the replay, I was like, oh, I was kind of up in there, but I was glad I was able to execute it. But yeah, just trying to, you know, make it look like something else and go over the top and get a touchdown, so. Okay. Dang, that was okay. uh, I'd appreciate the opportunity just to say a couple sentences before questions. Um, first of all, you know, I'd like to acknowledge how serious this situation is. Um, I understand what a, what a sensitive and uh, troubling subject this is, and uh, I'm not naive to uh, how much pain there may be for some people you know, involved in, in similar situations. I, uh, 
You know, I, I put my family through some things uh, that they don't deserve. I have uh, an amazing wife and an amazing son um, who love me unconditionally, and uh, you know, I, I don't want them to have to endure uh, anything more um, that, than what I've brought on. Um, it's devastating that my actions uh, or anything that I'm involved with could ever bring negative attention to uh, or bring distractions to this organization, uh, to the ownership, Miss Amy, and uh, you know, to the front office and, and obviously Coach Vrabel. Uh, I believe in myself as a man, and I, I believe that I will uh, answer the bell to lead this offense going forward. Uh, I thank Coach Vrabel and uh, John Robinson and Miss Amy for allowing me the opportunity to lead this offense uh, going into this weekend. And uh, these guys in the locker room, they deserve for me to uh, push, put my best efforts forth in that. Uh, because of the nature of the situation, I, I know there are a lot of questions. Uh, I know people are looking for details and answers and uh, unfortunately, because of the situation, I'm, I'm not able to discuss quite a bit uh, of that uh, evening. And uh, at the proper time, uh, when appropriate, uh, I, will, I will answer any questions that I can. How, how distracting is this for you this week in terms of you trying to go through your normal work week? It's not a, um, it's not a catchphrase. Um, or, or a, you know, tagline that this is a family here, and uh, these guys have really helped me uh, focus on the the job they deserve for me to do for them. Uh, so I've been working hard to to try to compartmentalize, uh, you know, my uh, dealings with uh, with my duties here. The ride share, the ride share availability here is that well communicated here, and you you aware of that? Yes. Yes. So why not you? Uh, you know, I, I can't get into the specifics of that night. Did you drink here or on the plane? I can't get into the specifics of that night. There, there was uh, one report that that uh, stated that you had received, the, or that you communicated that you had been receiving death threats. Um, is that report accurate? And if so, can you elaborate on that? I mentioned how much my family's already been through, and, and um, that is a portion of uh, what I am not at liberty to discuss uh, at the moment. Did you call the authorities about such matters? I understand there are a lot of questions, and I, uh, I wish that I were able to uh, just lay everything out, uh, but I, I'm not able to comment on the events that night right now. Do you have any you sense of it? trust with this organization after what happened? Uh, I try to build trust every single day in this organization. I, I feel as though for 20 plus years in this business, I've worked hard to try to uh, create and maintain an identity. Uh, I've tried to live strong in my faith and be a man of high character. And my hope is that the uh, feeling that these players and the guys that I work with uh, that their response has, has been genuine and that uh, that track record uh, speaks for itself. I know you said you can't address the events from that night, but the death threats, is that something that you had experienced before that night? Is, is that something that has been ongoing? Uh, I, I appreciate the, the uh, timeline and, and trying to be sensitive to not talking about that night. I, I'm not going to get into that portion of things at, at this time. How do you approach this? How do you approach this with the discipline might be coming, or I mean, have they given you any potential timetable so that you're not just sitting wondering every day? Right now, my focus is on being a great offensive coordinator today, and I will uh, take face on uh, everything as it comes. Uh, but I owe it to these guys to to focus on today and my duties today. Is there a plan in place in case the league comes down and hands out discipline at you know un at an unexpected time? I'm fairly certain you discussed that with Coach Vrabel. That would be, you know, a question for for him and, and his plan. Did you ever consider not coaching this week, or was it always the plan to kind of wait out the, the league? 
I love this team. And I love the men I get to work with, and, and I love the role that I've been entrusted uh, uh, to be a part of. And uh, as, as long as they allow me to do that, I, I want to be great at that role. Todd, kind of separate from that incident, but just how difficult has this season been for you personally? Um, I'm, I'm well aware of the, the pressures, the responsibilities, uh, and the expectations uh, that come with the privilege of coaching in this league. And uh, each season's going to have it, its own challenges. Uh, I'm a man that wants to step up and answer challenges, and uh, I believe that I've tried to, do, tried to do that and will continue to do that given the opportunity. Is this the toughest challenge you've had to face in your career? Can't think much tougher. Football goes. What's the challenge this week against the Bengals, and how much different do they look, maybe compared to the team you saw in January? Yeah, um, <clears throat> appreciate you turning it to football. Uh, this is a very talented unit. Obviously, uh, they bring some things schematically uh, that are a challenge. Uh, they can create matchup issues, and uh, they're a well-coached unit who isn't going to give you anything uh, simply based off missed assignments. So we have our work cut out for us. We need to be detailed in our assignments. Uh, we need to play with, with speed and urgency and confidence. And uh, that's what we're focused on this week, is making sure that we build off of the positives from, from the Green Bay game and, uh, and, and attack this opponent. From the divisional game against Cincinnati to now, obviously there's a lot of turnover on the roster, but you're a common thread. How do you approach this game? Is it a revenge game or a redemption type of game? or? Do you try to look at it where it's just another opportunity to prove yourself? I think you have to look at each each week uh, as its kind of uh, own storyline. And uh, there are a lot of people on this offense that were not here for that divisional round. And so to make it anything like a, a revenge game or a get back game, um, you know, would would isolate those new uh, characters in our story. And so we're really approaching this thing uh, as another opportunity to go out there, improve, and build on some of the, the things that we did the other night uh, in a positive manner and help this team win another game. How surprising is it to see, you know, 10 games in a season, Dontrell Hilliard leading the team in touchdown catches with, with four? And, you know, what does that say about him and what, what he has done? Yeah, not sure I would have guessed he'd be leading the team, um, but certainly not surprised at his success. He works extremely hard. Uh, we saw in training camp the efforts that he put into learning some of those uh, schemes and building a rapport with Ryan. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very happy for him, proud of Duntrell. What's made him so effective? One more time, I'm sorry. Duntrell Hilliard, especially in the red zone, what do you think has made him so effective? Yeah, again, just building that rapport and that trust with Ryan of being where Ryan expects him to be when he expects him to be there. Is the intention now to try to get to the ball to Traylon more? I think Traylon's grown each week that, that he's been back. Uh, and, and again, confidence is such a huge thing. When he can go play fast and play with confidence, it, it gives him the ability uh, to create some separation uh, and go make some of those contested plays. And then, obviously, the quarterback builds confidence in him uh, each time that he sees that happen. So uh, you know, Traylon's an important piece of this offense and look forward to seeing his role continue to grow. When he how does, effort, when he plays how like the effort to see his role grow differ from the effort to see Chig's role grow, which you guys have talked about for the better part of six weeks, but you haven't targeted more than two or three times a game. Yeah, uh, his, he's made his targets count, um, and you know they they play a little bit different roles in personnel packages in terms of how many receivers and tight ends you get on the field for different jobs and things like that. So I see them as kind of uh, two separate entities. Burks plays like he did the other night, and just the fact that he's back in the lineup and gives you that element. How much does that open up it open up the offense more for other guys in the pass game to win their battles? Yeah, I, I think um, confidence breeds confidence. So as you have some success, other guys, uh, you know, start to uh, naturally step up their game and play with a little bit more energy and excitement. And you know, something we did uh, on Thursday night is we converted more third downs, which gave us the opportunities to get into some more of those plays. And so if, we, if we're able to do that, um, you know, then I think more guys get to eat. That play action pass to Burks, the 51-yard gain, is that something like you dial that up 
to generate confidence between Tannehill and Burks, or is that something you want to put on tape so the rest of the league will know one on one if you're going to take at the two minute warning? Is that the one you're? Yeah. So that's a unique situation, you know, when you're that close to the two minute warning and the clock's going to stop at the end of that play in a four minute scenario, uh, anyways. Uh, you know, it gives you the ability to be a little bit more aggressive with the call. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, Ryan liked the opportunity uh, to take that one-on-one -on -one matchup based on how uh, Traylon been playing with speed and confidence throughout the game. And I was glad to see it uh, pay off for those two. What Brewer do at center? Had you guys late, late in the game that was in hand uh, last time you were up there. Is that a factor in that, too? Uh, it did not to me. It did not to me. What Brewer do? But he's still kind of in a little bit of a waiting game with, with Ben to see how that's going to play out this week. Yeah, very um, – proud of and excited for Aaron uh, and how he handled uh, that situation, you know, playing center on a short week uh, without any full speed reps in practice. Uh, you know, he really relied on some of the training that he had in, in training camp and in years past and uh, just very, uh, very proud of him and, and happy for him how he played. Todd, something, something good seems to happen every time Shig touches the ball. I, I guess what has maybe enabled him um, to get those explosive plays whenever he's kind of had the ball in his hands. Yeah, he's got a, a very unique skill set. You know, he's got the speed. He's got strength. You saw in the Denver game, he was able to bounce off a, a post player uh, coming in for the tackle and generate some run after catch. Uh, he has good hands. He has good concentration down the field. Um, you know, he, he makes the plays he's oppor uh, afforded the opportunity to make. So uh, excited about where Chig's at in his development, and uh, hopefully we can get him some more opportunities. So, Craig, uh, Caleb uh, now getting the chance to practice. So, uh, you know, with the injury that he had, was what was he able to maybe do to to work on his kicking skills while recovering? Yeah, I mean, he had uh, plenty of time to go out there and kick during rehab. Um, I know he had a setback early during training camp and things like that, but he's been able to go and work with our trainers uh, and kick and uh, obviously feel comfortable of putting him back on there to practice with us. So uh, we'll get another opportunity to see him today and see how he does. Right yeah, I, we thought he did well. I mean, for a guy who uh, hasn't really kicked in a team setting for so long, uh, for him to go out there and make a couple nice uh, field goals really uh, gave us a lot of confidence in him. And I also think it gave a lot of confidence in himself. Um, anytime a player deals with an injury and then has another setback, um, you know, it, it's a big wonder if he can go back out there and do that type of thing. And he went out there and did a great job for us yesterday. Show you before he got hurt. What did he show you before he got hurt? Like, I mean, what, what, why did you like him? I guess so much. Yeah, willing to keep him around. Um, well, obviously, we were excited during the off season with him. Um, him and Randy were having a great battle um, during OTAs and uh, really neck and neck on a lot of things. Both of them had a great camp, and um, you know, when he unfortunately got that injury on the last pretty much the last day. Um, we obviously wanted him to rehab and, and stick around. And uh, you know, if he, if he could come back, we could give him maybe another opportunity if something were to happen to Randy. How is Randy progressing? Yeah, good. Um, you know, he'll continue to do rehab. Um, we'll try to kick him again at some point in time. Um, but you know, he wants to get out there. And you know, he keeps on saying that he needs to be out there to help this team, uh, which is what we want. But uh, we're going to do what's obviously best for Randy and what's best for the team. How long can you take that during the week? I mean, do you think you need to know? Uh, today, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough because you know, the earlier you know, the better it is um, for all of us, for the team, for Coach Rabel, for ourselves, um, because we obviously want to get them in those situations where they're going to get to in uh, the game. And if we can't, uh, if we have to decide later on, that obviously makes it tough. And it also makes it tougher for Morgan and Ryan with our operation. Do you feel confident with Caleb if he has to kick on Sure, today? yeah. Um, you know, obviously uh, today's a big day for him too. Um, but from yesterday, we feel confident in him, and uh, we think the more and more he gets out here and he works with Ryan and he works with Morgan, he'll continue to get better like he did during um, OTAs. Is there a what, how is that balance for Ryan being a holder now? Potentially three different kickers, three different weeks. Do they like the ball in a different way? So, like, how is that adjustment been for him? Yeah, uh, that's a great question because. Each and every kicker might like to have their ball tilted, maybe straight up and down, things like that. We're lucky with Randy and now even Caleb. 
um, that their ball is pretty much straight up and down. So there's not going to be a crazy adjustment for that. But uh, that's why you guys see Ryan Stonehouse out here all the time working on that. And he's talked to Caleb and what Caleb likes. Um, and he'll continue to work at it and, and try to get better at it. Um, but yeah, there's not too much difference between the two. With Randy as part of the pier too, I mean, you could maybe get to Sunday and then he does something again in warm-ups. Yeah, that's been our big conversation um, because, you know, when Randy ended up getting hurt uh, during warm-ups, we had to go and kick off um, Stonehouse, which obviously puts a lot on his plate too. Uh, so that's a lot of things that either Coach Vrabel, John Robinson, myself, uh, Chase Blackburn, James, uh, you know, we'll continue to talk, um, see how Randy progresses. But yeah, we don't want to get bring a guy up and then all of a sudden he gets hurt and then he's out for another two to three weeks. So that's the stuff that we're going to continue to talk about and see what's best for the team. I know uh, a lot of hinges on weather, you know, winds, wind, all that. But what, what is Caleb? Does Caleb potentially give you more distance uh, than maybe Randy? And what do you think is? Ranges. Yeah, that's uh, the one thing that we really liked about Caleb. He played at Iowa, so he's used to, you know, not the greatest of weather. Uh, and we always thought he had a really strong leg. I believe he was first or second uh, last year in the NCAA on touchback percentages. Um, so he's got a strong leg for a guy who's not very big. Um, so yeah, he provides us with a little bit more power as far as kickoff and maybe even more on field goal too. So. Uh, the biggest thing for Caleb is him feeling comfortable out there, going to attack the ball because he hasn't really done that in a while, and just have confidence in himself to hit it with full power. Simmons was talking yesterday about the last game. Um, you guys and the Bengals and high sack for all the time, time, but weren't able to force a turnover. How important is that to not only get the sacks, but also get you know, the force fumbles and strip sacks and turnovers? Yeah, I mean, it's been a big emphasis for us throughout the offseason and uh, going into training camp throughout the season. We did a good job of it early. Haven't really done it as of late in terms of getting it off the quarterback. Um, again, it's tough to play defense in this league if you don't get turnovers, right? Yeah. Especially against probably one of the better offenses in the league. So finding ways to create them, whether it's off burrow, if we get lucky and for some crazy reason he throws us one. Um, but it, it's a big part of the game. Is there, has their passing game changed all that much without chasing the lineup? Or uh, I wouldn't say a whole lot. I think all those guys are stepping up, making a lot of plays. You see Higgins, man, he's having a hell of a year. Um, and they're talented. They got a lot of talent skill-wise. They do across the board. So I think all those guys have done a good job stepping up and taking on a little bit more probably with Chase being down. We'll kind of see where it's at Sunday. We're seeing a serious though. uptick for David Long as far as like getting pressures. What has been behind that? Yeah, I think for him, he's always been an instinctive player, and his instincts show when he blitzes. Um, he's pretty good in those one-on-one -on -one situations versus backs, and if he's able to get on some old linemen, some guards at times, um, you kind of see his his quickness show up, being able to get on edges and do some different things. So um, I think really that's where his instincts kind of show through in the passing game, probably more so than um, some of the other stuff we ask him to do. Do you feel like you guys are sending him a little bit more on blitzes and giving him a chance to attack? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a time and place, you know, based on what teams are doing to us and what, what we're asking him to do. And, um, I mean, some of those other guys come into, come into play in regard to that, just if we're dropping some guy out from line of scrimmage. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into kind of making those decisions. What have you seen from Bud as he kind of works his way back again and how much of a boost would he give you, give you if he can play? Yeah, I think Bud just brings energy, you know, like out on the practice field. Um, like you feel his presence out there. He's loud. He talks. Um, he's, he's never really down in the dumps out there. You know, he's always going always bring that positive vibe. And I think the other guys feed off it. So it's good to get him back out there. We'll kind of see as the week goes um, where he's at, what he's going to be able to do. It seems the pass rush is a lot more effective just when he's on the field. What are some of the things he does that maybe go unnoticed that makes the defense that much better? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just his his history, his career, like he's been a double-digit sack guy at times. I mean, offenses take note of that. You know, they take note of guys like that when they're out there. They got to have a plan for him, be prepared for guys like that. Um, I think just his ability to power and kind of constrict the pocket a little bit at times, it complements some of these other guys and it kind of hinders the quarterback on places to go, right? If we're collapsing from the outside, we're getting pushed in the middle, like it kind of all complements each other in, in those front four. 
be said maybe psychologically about shutting down another team's run game, you know, kind of winning that battle in the trenches and Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's week to week. I do what teams are trying to do, what what their identity is. I mean, it's we we pride ourselves on our physicality and being able to stop the run and set edges and play square and swarm to the ball. Um, but it really changes each, each week with our mindset going into the game of what, what we feel like is the most important things for us to come out successful. I think touched on it there, but one or two priorities for, for this team and specifically in, in terms of stopping a run game, what, what's most important? Yeah, I think we got to be sound. We do. Uh, I mean, Mixon's a good back. Pete Ryan's done a good job in there as well. Um, ultimately, for us, when we talk about stop the run, it's always about the edge, being able to build a wall with those front guys, being able to play square in the run game. We, you don't want to be turning sideways, getting your shoulders turned. Um, and then ultimately, the backers being able to get downhill and fit too, right? Take some of those doubles off. Um, so that's our mindset, no matter what scheme kind of we're playing. That's really what we're looking to do. How about you? Have you maybe checked on Danico and, and what does it say about him that so many guys are out there checking on his health and, and kind of speaking up his leadership? And yeah, he's been a big part of what we do. He, he has. Um, the production's been there for us. He's another unselfish guy for us up front that we've asked to do things at times that it ain't always to his benefit, but it's to the benefit of the unit. Um, and I think guys appreciate that. They understand his impact out there. Um, and he comes to work every day. I mean, he's uh, in his 30s out here grinding every single day, trying to get better, not really taking a whole lot of days off. Um, and I think guys appreciate that, especially, I mean, you look, the young guys on the team to have that example and to see a guy doing it like there's no excuse for a 24 25 year old not to be out here working when nico's out here every single day how much is the versatility of, of what you've been able to do with nickel you think maybe a, a rarity uh, like how much I, I obviously it's been forced by injury but yeah it seems like something you could have done by design yeah i think uh I think a lot of the credit goes to the players, the guys we've asked to do it. Um, they've been able to go in there and handle it. Um, from Raj to Elijah to Kalu to Hook at times, um, all those guys have went in and been able to execute, you know. And I think it's always a little bit easier, probably s even more so safety coming down at times than it is potentially even a corner, outside corner sliding in there, just based on our scheme and what we ask of that guy more times than not. Um, but I've been pleased with it. I've been encouraged by it. and. Again, it's, it's guys taking advantage of their opportunities, preparing like they're going to play, and then going in there and ultimately having finding success doing it. How much you like your chances if you get nine sacks again? Eh, not looking, not looking that way. You know, I mean, we got to find ways to affect them. Um, we'll see how, how the sacks go, but we got to find ways to affect them. He's a top tier quarterback in this league. He's playing at an extremely high level right now. Um, it's going to be a big time challenge for us come Sunday. Some of it was by injuries and attrition, but has, have you noticed uh, improvement from Murchison since he's gotten another crack at the Yeah, roster? I have. I, I think it, it, it was showing up when he was on the practice squad early in the year. You saw him continue to work. He wasn't, um, for lack of a better word, bitter about not being on the 53. He took it as the challenge, and he continued to work to improve, and he, he's earned it. Like He's earned the opportunity to go out there and play, and he's done a good job for us when he's been out there.